Today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know to play the brand new Fireteam Dirty Bomb mode in Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. The first thing you need to know is that Dirty Bomb is a really long game mode. The game lasts about 25 minutes. When the game starts you're going to be able to choose one of your custom created classes. And the objective is simple, you want to be the first team to get to 500 points. For every elimination your team is going to earn 1 point. And keep in mind that's only when the enemy is finished, you can revive teammates in this game. So if you just down a player but they get picked up or use a self revive then you're not going to get any points for that. They have to be down and finished all the way killed. You do not earn any points for destroying equipment, vehicles, anything like that. Unless of course the vehicles contain enemy players, in which case you still get 1 point per elimination. You get 5 points for each piece of uranium that you deposit into a dirty bomb, and you get 50 points for each dirty bomb your team detonates. The way this game mode works is that the game places 5 bombs in different locations around the map. There are up to 10 teams of 4 players each, and each team is trying to detonate as many bombs as possible in order to score points. To detonate a bomb, the first thing you'd have to do is arm the bomb by depositing uranium into it. You can find uranium in the various supply caches around the map, and you can also find uranium on the bodies of enemies that you kill. When you spawn in, you can carry up to 5 pieces of uranium, and you can upgrade this up to 10 pieces if you find the uranium pouch item. You can tell how much uranium you're carrying by looking at the bottom right hand corner of your HUD. While we're talking about the HUD, we might as well also cover where the self revive icon is displayed. It's down here on the bottom left, right next to your armor and your player health. In the left mid section you can see the score for the first place team as well as your team, or the second place team if your team's currently in the lead. And right below the score you can see the bomb status. If all the dirty bombs have already been detonated, then you're going to see that the bomb status for everything is locked for 45 seconds. Otherwise you're going to see the status of each bomb A through E. The status of the bombs is color coded to let you know what's going on at each bomb site. If any part of that icon is white then that means that that bomb is currently unarmed and needs more uranium deposited into it. If the entire icon is yellow without any border at all that means that that bomb is armed and ready to be detonated. If the icon is all yellow with a partial red or blue border that means that a team is currently detonating the bomb. If the border is blue that means it's your team which is detonating the bomb, and if it's red of course that means it's an enemy team. Once the bomb has been detonated the icon will turn either a solid red or blue depending on whether that was friend or foe who detonated the bomb. Once the bomb's detonated you have about 15 seconds before it explodes. And once the bomb has exploded you'll see the color change to kind of this cracked to indicate that the target has been destroyed. And like I mentioned earlier, once all the bombs have been destroyed you're going to enter that 45 second cooldown while 5 new bombs spawn in. This cycle just sort of loops endlessly until one of the teams reaches 500 points, at which point the game is over. And it's kind of unfortunate in my opinion that the game doesn't keep going to figure out which team gets to 500 points second, third, fourth. The game just ends right there and whichever team has the second highest number of points gets second, third, fourth, and so on. Now that you understand how the game and how the scoring works and where everything is displayed on your HUD, let's move into some general tips for playing Dirty Bomb. The first and most crucial tip that I can give you is that you want to work together as a team. Sure you can spawn in solo, play by yourself and just play for kills, but you're not going to really be helping your team very much and you're probably not going to win very many games. Because the real points are in depositing the uranium and destroying the sites. It's always a really good idea to thirst enemy players whenever possible because the revives in this game are really fast. Reviving a teammate only takes about 2 seconds, and the self revive takes about 2.5 seconds and there are many of those on the map. You also want to use the vehicles whenever possible because kills with the vehicles count. So if you have a chance to jump into a tank or a chopper, go ahead and go for it and just play the slayer role and try to get as many kills as possible while helping your team explode one of the bomb sites. We don't have the ability to go into custom games right now for Dirty Bomb so we can't do a lot of really in-depth testing, but the armor in Dirty Bomb seems to work just about the same way as it does in Warzone. So just be aware that if you see a blue armor hit marker that means you've cracked that enemy's armor. A white armor hit marker means that enemy has more armor. And as far as I can tell headshots don't seem to go through armor at all, so go for headshots whenever possible. If you're having trouble finding uranium scattered around the map there are a few good ways to collect that. Keep your eye out for any supply drops that come in. As far as I can tell those always contain about 5 to 10 uranium pieces each, which is enough to fill you up. You can also keep an eye out for redeploys, they're usually pretty easy to kill and they seem to always drop one piece of uranium. 
Going back to armor for a second, armor seems to be, I don't want to say rare, but not super common in this game because there are no buy stations, so you can't just go and buy a full set of armor. You've got to loot that by getting these various supply caches, which interestingly enough, the supply caches seem to be more scattered throughout the woods than inside the buildings. In those different supply caches or crates or whatever you want to call them, you can also find score streaks. And probably the best score streak you can find is that air patrol, because if an enemy gets into a chopper, you can just call in your air patrol and you get a free kill. When you die, you're going to get a chance to redeploy on your team, kind of like in Ground War from Call of Duty Modern Warfare. And a lot of people don't realize this, but you can choose to deploy in the air or on the ground right next to a squad mate. The air deployment is triggered by pressing the reload key, which is square on PlayStation 4. And the ground deployment is triggered by pushing the jump button, which is X or cross button on PS4. And there are a couple of really important differences to know about these two different types of redeploying. If you deploy in the air, there's a good chance that the enemy is going to get a call out that enemy forces are being deployed, but you also have the opportunity to potentially land behind them in your parachute. The other really nice thing about the air deployment is that you can deploy in the air even when your squad mates are in combat. This is not possible with the ground redeployment, and you have to wait a couple seconds after your teammate has left combat in order to redeploy on the ground. It's also good to know that if you die and need to redeploy, as long as you have at least one teammate left, it's only going to take about 5 seconds for you to respawn. If your squad gets wiped, however, it's going to take about 20 seconds for everyone to respawn. So whatever happens if you're the last man standing, don't take any unnecessary risks because that could put your team at a huge disadvantage. Another thing that a lot of people don't realize about this mode is that the first bomb out of the set of 5 takes longer to detonate than the last bomb. For example, I went through and timed some of these. Now, again, we don't have custom games, so it's really hard to get an accurate measure on this, but it appears to take 20 seconds to detonate the first bomb. It takes about 17 seconds to detonate the second bomb, 14 seconds for the third and fourth bombs, and about 5 seconds for that fifth bomb. All of these times assume that you don't have any teammates anywhere nearby you when you're detonating, because if you do, it's going to detonate the bomb faster, very similar to how you can capture a domination point faster if more of your teammates are on the dom point. Having teammates nearby when you're detonating a bomb, or just standing near the bomb when one of your teammates is detonating is a great way to arm the bomb a whole lot faster, which just reinforces that always stick together as a team philosophy we talked about earlier. As of the time of making this video, we are playing the Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War Open Beta, and there are quite a few bugs with this mode. Generally speaking, this mode's pretty stable for a beta, and this is by no means complaining. I just want to outline a few of the bugs here, in case you see any of them. I just want you to know that you're not alone, we're all seeing them too. The first and most obvious problem with this game mode is the lack of ammo. As far as I can tell, there's no ammunition anywhere on the ground, in crates. You can't even pick up ammunition or guns off of players that you've killed, so I've found myself several times running completely out of ammunition and just going off and dying because it was the only way to get more ammo. Not even the scavenger perk was able to save me and give me more ammo, so I would highly recommend running extended mags on whichever weapon you like. This is also a pretty good segue into what I consider to be my favorite loadout so far for Dirty Bomb. Of course, all of this is subject to change when the game fully releases. But right now I'm really enjoying this M16 assault rifle. Because it's a burst fire weapon, you don't go through the ammo quite as quickly and that makes a huge difference right now. You can see my favorite loadout for the M16 on the screen. I like the Agency Suppressor, one of the extended mags, it's really your choice which one you want, the Rapid Fire Barrel, and then a few attachments to reduce the recoil. For the secondary, there are several great options. I personally prefer this Lock-On Rocket Launcher, just because I hate dealing with vehicles. But of course, shotguns are very popular, and so are the knives. The knives are surprisingly useful right now because so many players are running around without enough ammunition. Going back to the bugs that I've seen, I've also seen a couple of games where it was just horrendously laggy and one game we even had a connection interrupted, but I expect all that to be cleared up for the most part when the game releases on November 13th. The only other major bug I've encountered was in this game where I had the HUD completely disappear from my screen. I had no minimap, I had no ammunition, nothing, no armor, I couldn't even tell how many pieces of uranium I was carrying, so that was a pretty bad bug, but it did clear itself up on the next game. But, like I said, this is a beta, and such things are to be expected. I've already got my pre-order in for Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, but I'd really like to know what you think. Let me know in the comments down below. Did you play the beta? Are you excited for the full game? When it comes out, which mode are you going to be playing the most? 
Campaign, Multiplayer, Zombies, or Battle Royale? Let me know that, as well as what you think about Fireteam Dirty Bomb, down in the comments down below. And if you're as excited as me for Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War on Friday, November 13th, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on my future uploads. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, and as always, thank you very much for watching.